Uh, and I'll uh, recognize myself for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Scott, you served as chief of the Border Patrol uh, uh, through the end of the Trump administration and the beginning of the Biden administration. Ms. Escobar and others have assured us there really was no difference in policy between those two administrations. Was that your uh, observation? Uh, it completely misses the mark. And I will go beyond that. I was in the Border Patrol for 29 years, not just during the Trump administration. I was in San Diego when the Clinton administration said, illegal immigration is a threat to this country, we need to do something about it. And we came up with an operation and we started using things called fences, same as a wall, and we started using consequences what, what and impacted, we addressed it. What impact did the Biden policies have on the uh, security of our southern border? It reversed the entire like 29 years of my career. It reversed all the progress we made and completely decimated border security. Would you say that these changes are responsible for the crisis we now see at that border? 100% because it's catch and release. Mr. Nadler assures us that, well, don't worry, everybody who comes across is subject to, in his words, rigorous vetting procedure. Would you uh, elucidate on that? Yeah, the information they give the officer, their name, their, and even the fingerprints are bounced off of a database here in the United States that has minuscule information about foreigners in it. So it's the equivalent of checking them in basically an empty hard drive. So you're, you, you'd once described it as, uh, as, as checking it against a blank sheet of paper. Correct. Because we don't have that information and then they're allowed in. It sounds really good. Uh, it's really doing nothing. It's the interviews where the agents, and they look at their tattoos, they look at their face, they figure out are they telling you the truth. That's where you find things out and that is not taking place today because of the massive flow. Because of the massive flow. And yet the Democrats say the, the solution to this is we need to increase that massive flow. We need to legalize all of this so that everybody coming in uh, has a chance to go through that very process. Um, uh, how thorough would that be? I, I like to actually use facts as well. And the fact is every time, and this goes beyond immigration, every time there's been a consequence for a crime, a deterrent and a consequence, that crime has gone down. When we had consequences on the border and we held people until the judge adjudicated their case, the flow stopped because the vast majority of the asylum seekers are fraud. That's the solution. Just enforce the law. Okay, now the, the two numbers that I've been focused on are the 2.6 million illegal aliens that the administration has deliberately allowed into this country, despite the federal law says they should be detained, uh, and in addition to that, the 1.7 million known gotaways, people that the Border Patrol observed crossing the border but simply couldn't intercept because they're completely overwhelmed. As I said in my uh, introductory remarks, this is a, com a population larger than the combination of New Mexico and West Virginia put together. If we legalize that, we're gonna get more of it, obviously. How thorough can the vetting process be under such circumstances? There's, the, there's no bandwidth for that. So it's nice to talk about things, theory is great, but in reality, there's only a certain number of agents and officers. It takes two hours for a CBP officer to process, process one of these asylum seekers at a port, about an hour and a half for Border Patrol agents. Just do the math, there would be no enforcement. And then back to New York, they can't handle 100,000, how many is too many? Seriously, we can't, this is unsustainable. Uh, Mr. Naresta, um, 5,000 terrorists released from Parowan. We know where one of them went. One of them, 10 days later, went to Abbeygate and detonated the bomb that killed 13 uh, U.S. service members. Can you tell us where the other 5,000 are? I'm sorry, can you tell me the name of that individual? I missed the first part of that. The, the, the terrorist who uh, uh, detonated the bomb came from Parowan. Where are the other 5,000 that were released that day? Which bomb? The bomb that was detonated at the Kabul airport. Oh, in Kabul. Don't, don't play dumb, come on. No, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, the, the, that, you mean in, in Afghanistan? Uh, in Afghanistan. If you want to play dumb, play dumb. I'm done asking you questions. I'm sorry, is this about the with, southwest with, I'm border? I'm not this game with the Is this about terrorism on the border? Left. Um, Mr. Uh, Benzman, we talk about legalizing the process. Don't we already have a legal process availed by millions of people to enter this country legally, who obey all of our laws, who do everything our country's asked of them? Uh, isn't that system already in existence? Isn't the problem that we have millions of people now flouting that law? Yes, and I, I think after 9-11, a lot was done to enhance the uh, counterterrorism kind of security screening measures for a lot of those, which I uh, believe made it more difficult. They do fail still sometimes, uh, but 
But I believe that with this mass migration crisis that the balance is shifting where uh, people, bad guys across the world are well aware that our border now is a vulnerability and they can get through. There was just recently uh, in July a case in Ohio, FBI case that just wrapped up uh, that involved a, an Iraqi asylum seeker. Uh, he, was, he is the pleaded guilty now uh, defendant uh, whose plot involved bringing four Iraqi terrorists over the border to kill President George Bush, former President George Bush. Uh, that was a, a, a legitimate counterterrorism case. And what it shows us is that uh, they're looking, the bad guys are looking at that border right now. Well, uh, and, and, and as I recall, he, he actually said that he was now bringing his accomplices in through the southern border because That's it's right. so much easier than abusing the, the, the visa process. Uh, my time's expired, and uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I want to thank all the members who uh, joined us uh, for today's questioning. Uh, this will conclude the hearing. Uh, I'd like to thank the witnesses for appearing. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written questions for the witnesses or additional materials for the record. And without objection, the hearing is adjourned. <laughs>